30 luxury homes are embarking on a 150-mile sea voyage to form a unique floating town. But will all the homes survive swirling currents and the precarious lift and launch? The world's first full-size house factory is about to start production. I was worried about that. But can movers keep up with the assembly line and haul over 200 homes to build the fastest town in the West? That's all the power I got right there. Two towns. <laughs> two teams with a mission to move them. Two titanic tasks that will test the nerves of the people who dare to risk Huge moves. Moving buildings is a risky business. So imagine the challenge and danger of moving an entire town. One of the most ambitious moves in history began in 1954, when residents of remote areas in Newfoundland attempted to relocate their communities to busier shores. Some tried to haul their homes across the frozen winter sea, while others waited until summer and risked floating their homes on fragile wooden rafts. Not everyone made it across. Fifty years later, another ambitious Canadian is preparing to move a town by sea, this time through the treacherous waters of Vancouver Island. Visionary developer Mark Lindholm has grand plans for marina in the historic town of Victoria. This is a layout, a plan of what the docks will eventually look like. Mark's idea is to build homes that float on water, moored in streets alongside a series of walkways. The 30 homes will form a futuristic floating community. Mark's first challenge is to find adventurous home buyers willing to take the plunge and sign up to the life aquatic. So you look like a very young couple. Do you still have uh, children at home? Empty you be... nesters. Empty so empty His nesters. first customers are Ken and Deanna Stratford. As a uh, float home owner, you're not only joining that yacht club kind of sentiment, yeah. but you're also now uh, one of the mavericks that own a float home. Everything is possible. We can put <laughs> elevators in, uh, we can do anything, <laughs> pretty much anything that you do on land, we can do on yeah. the water. Uh, it's, it's just, as I say, it's a function of uh, your checkbook. It uh, can all be done. Well, I think maybe we should talk to that architect. I'd like that. <laughs> Ken and Deanna hope to move into their marina mansion in just six months' time. We're hoping that a float home would give us a lot of freedom. Um, it certainly has everything that we would be looking for as far as lifestyle goes. You've always got the light around you. You're always energized and interested in what's happening and what's going on. But already, Mark faces a problem. Marina residents are not keen on a noisy construction site in their picturesque harbor. So Mark must build the floating homes 150 miles to the north of the island at marine construction company SeaTech. Once complete, he'll have to move each of the 30 homes back to Victoria to create his floating town. The construction team, led by Fabian Stratton, have no time to lose. I'll just start decking for 25 feet. Okay, well, let's get four boards down. But how exactly will they make these buildings float? The easiest method would be to build a hollow container under the house, just like the hull of a boat. The problem is that just like a boat, if it's hold, it will fill up with water and sink. In order to create an unsinkable home, the floating foundation needs to be filled with something solid but light. Big 
huge foam blocks, put them inside the float for the houses, cover them in rebar and concrete. They'll end up getting, I don't know, a floatable product. <laughs> they fill the foundations with 18 blocks of styrofoam. They've estimated that 200 cubic meters of foam should be enough to keep the front door floating above water, but they won't know for sure until the home is launched. We're just doing some finishing touches on getting the foam sealed up. Any cracks like that we'll need to fill with mono foam. They encase the foam foundations in water-resistant concrete, leave it to set solid, and build the luxury house on top. Building the first set of homes takes four months. The next challenge is to launch the homes into the water and find out for sure if they sink or swim. In Denver, Colorado, a more earthly paradise is about to materialize. Construction king David Cohen made his name working alongside his father, building some of Denver's tallest skyscrapers. Now he's planning a mass home move that could rapidly accelerate suburban growth. This man thinks big. I would imagine in the central business district that our company built 15 or 20 buildings, from the Amico building to my left, Petra Lewis Tower in front of us, and the 54-story building, uh, the Quest Tower, that's the most significant building in downtown Denver we built. Having successfully conquered vertical building, David is now turning his attention to the horizontal. Amazingly, it's today's housing developments, stretching for miles over vast areas of land, that are the new giants of construction. So big that if you were to pile up all the homes in a large new housing development, they would be taller than the Empire State Building. David plans to build a town of 237 homes on this piece of land. His ambition is to reduce the average time it takes to build a four-bedroomed house from 100 days to just 25. He thinks that if you can build cars on a fast-moving production line, then you should be able to do the same with houses. So David plans to build the world's first factory for full-sized homes. This parcel of land on the edge of town has been planned and approved for a large new residential community. If we put the factory right here, we can build full-size traditional homes in a controlled environment and get them to their foundation without the impediments that would normally make that impossible. Conventional wisdom has always assumed that family homes are too big and fragile to be factory built and hauled hundreds of miles cross country. But David plans to put an assembly line at the center of his new town, so no home will need to be moved more than a mile to reach its foundation. The factory will pump out a new house every week until the rows of empty streets are lined with homes. When the town is complete, the factory can be moved to a new site where once again, a new town can be born. The empty streets are waiting and the factory is ready. With millions of dollars invested in the project, the stakes are high for David. If this works, it could revolutionize house building forever. On Vancouver Island, the team building the floating homes destined for Victoria Marina face a major challenge they must launch the first three houses into the water. They've built the homes on top of a giant floating platform. Now they must gently lower the platform into the water and allow the homes to float clear. But this won't be easy. Compressed airlines feed into 10 huge tanks that keep the platform floating above the waterline. When they release the air, the tanks flood with water and the platform supporting the houses sinks. The homes should then lift up and float free. It's just like a ship sinking, basically. We're trying, trying to control it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> 
One by one, Fabian releases air to flood the tanks under the platform. So we work our way in a bit of a sequence so that we go down evenly. See, if we flooded these two tanks first, that end would drop down. So we want to do it as even as possible. Well, you don't want to uh, damage anything. You know, it's, uh, there's a lot of money sitting here and you get things bouncing around and you start banging buildings together and stuff like that, we'll then spend a lot of money doing repairs. The water is just about to the corner here on this one, Fabian. It's the beginning. It could go bad yet. <sighs> dropping right now. It's going to start going here real quick, I think. Just kind of shift this way a little bit. Sink it big on that side, the way. Suddenly, the entire platform lurches dangerously to one side. As Fabian battles to level the platform, the first house starts to float free. Houses two and three also lift off. Oh, there we go. Close now. Everything's exploding! Hey, John, we need you to make that quick, please. They're losing control as the strong tide pulls the buildings away from the dock. Within seconds, the situation becomes critical. The tide is about to smash the house into a post. Gonna hit the pile! Hey, Bullet Joe, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Better send somebody to rescue that other one because it's heading to Campbell River. <laughs> well, you can see the current picking up here. The strong tidal current sweeps the first house downstream. Now head south, John. You're going too far north. Well, I'm working on it here. John's little boat engine is no match for this strong tide. So he attaches a line to the runaway house and tows it with the tide to the safety of a moored barge. We're on our way now. They finally managed to bring the homes under control and move them clear of the platform. Tug driver Kev arrives to tow the homes to the marina in Victoria, but decides the tide is far too strong to risk setting off now. So what time do you think you're going to get away? Midnight is the next flood. The weather providing ain't so. Yeah, yeah, always. Kev waits for the tide to turn, and at midnight, he finally casts off. He faces an epic 150-mile journey through unpredictable waters. Well, the last time they sent me out for three days, I was out 19. The other time they sent me out for six, I was gone 44. <laughs> That's part of the job. By morning, the homes have traveled 50 miles down the coast. But a storm is now brewing. By the looks of the weather, we're going to get stuck at Powell River. A couple of anchors there we can tie to. Sunday night is meant to blow up to 40 southeast, so we definitely want to be hiding for that. With bad weather ahead, Kev risks exposing the houses to high winds and waves if he's caught in open waters. He needs to get to the sheltered side of these islands. But to make it to safety, they must negotiate a maritime black spot, the infamous Dodd Narrow. Uh, it runs pretty good in there. The tide runs hard. It can run up to six or seven knots. Dodd Narrows is one of the smallest and most dangerous straits of Vancouver Island. Only 60 foot wide and lined with rocky outcrops, it channels the tides into high-speed cross currents that swirl in vicious eddies and whirlpools. We got another boat coming there, grab one of the houses. I'll be following the other boat. <laughs> He's been doing it for 30 years. So. 
There's a real risk of the two houses smashing into each other or grounding on the rocks. So Kev has called in veteran tug driver Harvey to take the first house and guide him through the narrows. In the last 30 years, uh, I've been down here and retrieving four boats that have gone down, but it's been stupidity, really. One guy read the tide wrong and got caught in uh, the back head. He thought he was flying up here, and all of a sudden, Joan Point, he hit the, the ebb tide and spun around and went under. Kev watches anxiously as Harvey enters the narrows first. We're going around in circles here. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Kev battles to hold a good line through the narrow and out the other side. Go ahead, Harvey. Good job there. Good job. I'm feeling better now. You're all tightened up and away. Thanks very much, Harvey. We'll run away. They've made it halfway to Victoria, and after surviving the rite of passage through Dodd Narrow, the crew of the North Coaster enjoy a celebratory sausage. Thank you, sir. Ah. In Denver, the assembly line in David's pioneering house factory is gearing up to build one house every 25 days. There are five workstations, one for each stage of production. At station one, they assemble the walls, floors, and roof of the wood frame house. We don't have this luxury on the field. You hump everything, you haul everything on your back. They're spoiled. <laughs> At station two and three, they install the internal plumbing and wiring. At station four, they paint the walls and put in the windows. And at the final station, they lay the floors, plumb in the bathrooms, and plug in the microwave. Only one piece of the house is missing, the foundations, which are waiting outside. But this is a major problem for the construction team. A wooden building of this size could easily twist out of shape if the team tried to move it through the factory without a solid base. The only solution is to build the house on a steel frame, a bit like the chassis of a car, to keep the structure rigid. Underneath the frame, they install 10 air casters. Each one channels a powerful jet of air capable of lifting up to 14 tons. The house floats on a thin, frictionless cushion of air along the assembly line from one station to the next. It's more like a hover pad. These are little hover pads all the way around it. You can actually push a whole house with your hand. Two tons. Pretty amazing stuff. As the first homes take shape inside the factory, the sales team do their best to promote the empty streets outside. It's going to be a little challenging for the sales staff to try and get people to purchase houses without seeing them go up, and then they'll show up complete, like a finished manufactured product you'd buy at a store almost. So it's going to be a different selling experience for sure. 
I'm David Cohen. Hi, I'm George Rosales. George, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Jessica. Jessica, nice to meet you. David meets the Rosales family. Nice to meet you. He hopes to convince them that his factory can build their dream home. Wow. That's huge. <laughs> I know, isn't it? That's something. The Rosales family are the first buyers to be given the grand tour of the assembly line in action. Sales manager Jennifer Alpert hopes to secure the sale by showing them the layout of a four-bedroomed home. So we could be standing in our kitchen right now. You could be standing in your kitchen right now? <laughs> Playing what we're going to have for dinner? Yeah. That'd be awesome. You're standing on the table. Well, so is start it. building it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. We're ready. <laughs> the Rosales home takes shape, but before it can move down the production line, the team faced their biggest challenge launching the first completed house into the outside world and proving that David's factory-built town might just work. In Vancouver, the floating homes are on the final leg of their voyage. Welcome to Victoria. Ah, the home's getting home. Thank goodness. <laughs> Victoria Harbour is one of the busiest on the west coast of Canada. Cruise liners, ferries, and yachts jostle for space as a constant flow of seaplanes adds to the mayhem. Two five Sierra Harbor, did you have contact with that beaver now? Crossing at 12 o'clock, two and a half miles. Here comes the plane now. Ah, this is a busy place. Kev must now guide the homes through a narrow channel to reach the marina. We've got lots of water in there right now. The marina diver's line is 12 feet, so 12 and 14 feet. It's not much water, and it's very narrow. Mm -hmm. Right here. i got to go in this channel with it right here. Okay. Kev takes the houses as far as he can, and then the marina team moor them into position. Push it in, then we can untie it. Speed kills. Yeah, tell that kid, you know, don't go ramming it. He only knows one speed. <laughs> Marina manager Colin is anxious to see whether any seawater has washed in, causing damage. Well, that's a bit. I mean, considering it's come 130 nautical miles in rough seas, it's pretty good. Mark's town is taking shape but much too slowly. The move has taken twice as long as planned. He will never meet his completion deadline if he carries on moving homes at this pace. Customers like Ken and Deanna are packing up their city homes ready to move into the floating town. Mark and the team will have to come up with a faster way of shipping the houses. It's always painful to leave a house or a home, but we also, of course, are really looking forward to the new adventure. So. Back at SeaTech, they've been rethinking how to move the floating homes. Well, the first two we did, they, they went down. We had a bit of problems with weather. They were delayed, and so this is why we're trying a different system. Their new approach is to use this huge barge, first as a construction site to build the homes, then as a floating platform to move them. It's large enough to take four homes, including Ken and Deanna's. And this is a much safer method to transport the houses down because they're sitting inside of a barge, so there's really nothing can happen to them. You can go in any weather, and uh, there's no, no chance of damage to the house. It actually goes quicker with the barge because the barge can tow at seven or eight knots. They launch today. The team work frantically to finish the homes before the tugboat arrives to tow them to Victoria. Still got to dismantle the scaffolding, wrap up the tools. We're still installing. 23 minutes. See ya. <laughs> With the 
tug roped to the front of the barge, the floating village set sail. Everybody's off, I hope. Have a safe trip. She's all done. My babies! Yeah, they're gorgeous. Looks like its own little floating town, basically. Just take the sides of the barge off and grow some grass, you could have its own little community. The guys, they did a great job. The hull of the barge moves easily in the water. The little north coaster picks up good speed as they reach Dodd Narrow a day ahead of schedule. Security, security, security. North coaster, southbound, one barge in tow, transiting Dodd Narrow at 1-1. One, one. They draw the barge in close to the tug to ensure maximum control as they navigate the narrow. Once through, they let it out on a longer leash. By dawn the next day, the four houses reach Victoria. They've arrived on time and completely dry, but now they face a new challenge. This barge doesn't sink. So how do you offload four 85-ton homes into the ocean? In Denver, it's time to test David's groundbreaking idea and move the first house out of the factory. The foundations for this first home lie half a mile away from the factory doors. With the assembly line set to churn out one house every week, there's no time to build a traditional moving rig for each home. So they've designed a unique whole house shuttle, complete with leveling hydraulics and remote controlled power steering. The plan is to dock the shuttle at the end of the assembly line, roll the house on, and steer the rig to the foundations. No one has tried anything like this before, and move team leader Scott White is feeling the pressure. Here's the real deal. This is it, this is the real house, the first house. So uh, it's a make or break day for me. The team hooks cables to the house and start to winch it out onto the shuttle and along steel beams. Ready? As his boss looks on, Scott checks the house rolls evenly. If it veers off course, it could fall off the rig. It worked. I, I was worried about that. This is a real milestone having unit number one come out the door. We uh, have worked on it for so many years. It's exciting. We're rocking and rolling now. The house makes it safely onto the moving rig. But now, the real test begins. This is the first time any of the move team has ever attempted to move a house. A little nervous, a uh, little, little anxious. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming for this day. And if something breaks, it's Adrian's fault. <laughs> Our brakes are off, we're ready to go. I'll pop a wheelie right now. Using the remote control, Scott rolls the rig forward and the house sets off at a snail's pace. Up ahead, he faces his first tight turn onto a busy road. I am not gonna hit clear this tree. I see there's nothing I can do about it. A newly planted tree stands in the way. And with the house blocking the busy road, Scott can't park here. Just after the house picks up speed, they hit another glitch. 
Yeah, we're going to have to go real slow over this curb, and you guys got to keep me level. Unfortunately for Scott, sidewalks have been built before the houses are in place. That's both joysticks full. That's all the power I got right there. That's just not enough. Full throttle! Scott has one more shot, but they're still stuck. That's it. The truth, I, I'm at a loss, man. With the house stuck in the dirt, there's only one thing for it. To call in the house mover's trusty friend, the front loader. With an extra 100 horsepower hooked up, the house makes it over the curb. Little more. That's good. Scott checks everything inside the house has survived the bumpy ride. The house is in good condition, although we're not all the way there yet. We got another 30 feet. All right, let's do it, boss. Their final task is to slide the house onto its foundations. This away? Three-eighths that way? Yeah. This house will stand in the center of a row of six adjoining townhouses. Now we're dead nuts, parallel with the foundation. But it's like a set of railroad tracks. You have to keep it all straight. The team must line up the walls precisely with the foundations. If there are a fraction of an inch out, the entire street of homes will not be straight. All right, we're going, John. They reconnect the winches and carefully roll house number one onto its foundations. Beautiful. Oh, Harley, we couldn't ask for more than that. With 236 more homes to haul, Scott's team must ensure the next move runs smoother to keep pace with the assembly line. You know, this is the first real test of it, but uh, that's things I need to I need to think through better in the future. Is uh, you know, trees, posts, stuff like that. It's so intricate and so complex, and hey, you know. One part of a million things could go wrong and it shuts us down. Just a little tune up, you know, a little maintenance. We'll get it. In Victoria, the team faces the daunting task of unloading four floating homes into the water. This shipyard has the only machine on the island big enough for the job. It's a 150 metric ton, level luffing, electrically powered, fully revolving, rail mounted crane. And we are going to be using the 150 ton level luffing crane to put these houseboats from the barge into the water. The rigging team prepare the lifting gear as crane operator Gary lowers the five-ton hook. Yeah, the horn works. <laughs> <laughs> Try the wipers, are quieter. Hey, Gary, take her up. These are some of the strongest lifting cables in the business. But crane rigger Norm has spotted a major problem. We could probably block them all, but there's two here that are going to be critical. The third one is probably the worst. Okay, bye. We've got a little bit of a scenario. We got we got an overhang on, uh, on the top of the, the houseboats, which will be a potential crush hazard. There's nowhere on the floating homes for the crane to hook onto. So the team plan to pass lifting straps under the foundations and attach them to the crane with long steel wires. But the balconies could be crushed by the cables as they tension up. Something we gotta deal with. <laughs> okay. 
To solve the problem, the crane crew hope these huge red beams, known as spreader bars, will hold the steel wires away from the fragile balconies. With the bars in place, they thread the lifting straps under the house through long, narrow trenches. Each nylon belt is capable of lifting over 70 tons. The team is nervous. They have never attempted a lift of this scale and complexity before. All stop. What they don't want to do is pick the house up and have it swing one way or another. A couple inches either way could be catastrophic. Ken and Deanna watch anxiously from the dockside with the other float homeowners. Well, first of all, it's somebody's home. This is their whole life savings they put into some of these homes. And um, so it's a little bit of a tight space. Last thing we want is a homeowner getting all upset because uh, there was a scratch, right? And, I, and who would blame them? The lift is certainly going to be exciting. And I'd rather they uh, were cautious now than after one's tumbled into the water, so. <laughs> Coming up easy. Yeah, we're just starting to uh, take weight now. Okay, hold that. I'll stop. Coming up real easy, Norm, to 50 ton. Start now, Norm. Coming up on the load real easy to 8-0. Metric ton. All stop at eight zero. Yeah, you're starting to peel off on this end too, Norm, and uh, the barge is falling above too. It's uh, moving around with the hook. Yeah, I think we are uh, stuck to the barge. We've got two things that are moving. You got a crane that's going up, and the barge is going with it, <laughs> and it's moving. The team faces a sticky situation. The concrete foundations that were poured directly onto the barge are now clinging to the barge's surface. As Gary lifts more weight, he's lifting the entire barge out of the water. The home could break free from the barge at any moment. Then there's a danger the barge will shift. If Gary doesn't keep up with the moving target, the swinging house could easily crash into the other homes. OK, Gary, up two more, please. Going up two more. The so what we're going to do is go up in little increments, and hopefully we can just slowly break it free of the deck. Going up real easy to 87. There she goes. We're free. No, so everything's good. Uh, Gary, we got a movement here. The uh, barge. You're going to have to keep up with it, buddy. The barge moves suddenly, and the house swings alarmingly close to Ken and Deanna's home. Get away from my house, too. You're getting a little close swinging back and forth. <laughs> Gary rolls the crane to one side and lifts the house clear of the danger. To the owner's relief, the first house is safely in the water, and Norm yeah. climbs aboard to release the lifting gear. Think skinny, Norm. Think skinny. Uh, I am skinny. It's all the gear I got on. That's what it is. Now that they've done the first one, the, the next three, well, hey, they've broken ground. <laughs> well, one down, three to go. That was a hard one. First one's always a hard one. Yep, it's always the hard one. The next ones go off pretty quick. They connect up house number two and start to lift, but immediately run into more trouble. OK, up easy, Gary. Crushing the roof on this side. OK, I'm going to get definite compression on this when it starts coming up. The balconies and overhangs on this house are extra wide. We keep coming up against the, the house with our wires. It'll crush it if we keep coming up. I don't know what we're going to do here. Got some more head scratching. That's why I don't have any hair. Too much scratching. The team must improvise and solve the problem quickly. They hammer in thick wooden blocks to hold the straps further away from the house. Gary restarts the lift. The team watches nervously, hoping that the blocks will hold. 
So we're coming up. Uh, we've got a little bit of bend on the end here, but it's not too bad yet. Big deal, I'm real easy. Oh, there she goes. It works. The second house sails over the edge of the barge and into the water. The tow boats clear the landing zone and the third house touches down in style. Last up is Ken and Deanna's place. Hey, hey! Hey, there she goes! It's uh, kind of scary watching your future hanging by a couple of nylon straps. Sounds like the story of my marriage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does it float? Three, two, two one. Contact. contact. She's down. She's down all the way. And they just have to save the best to last. In Denver, the house factory is in full swing. Completed houses now roll off the assembly line at a rate of one per week. In just three months, the move team has hauled the first street of homes into place. Now, just one house is missing from East Chenango Place, the Rosales family home. They make the finishing touches ready for the big move, but overnight, disaster strikes. We don't normally get snows of uh, this magnitude here in Denver. It's been four or five years since we've had a storm of this size. We've got two feet of snow in the clear, drifts of four and five feet. This was a big snow event. The snow stole Scott's plans to move the house out of the factory this morning, but it can't sit there for long. The storm hasn't really impacted our work within the plant. We're able to work in our environment that's controlled. The rest of the city shut down. With work continuing inside the factory, Scott's team must clear the Rosales home out of the way, despite the weather, to avoid jamming up the production line. It's cold. Let's start winching. Scott is nervous. His house shuttle wasn't built to work in these freezing conditions. Obviously, visibility is quite a problem right now. And the fact it's so cold, my hydraulics are really slow. It doesn't have the action it usually has. Everything's delayed a few seconds uh, just because of the temperature. They've gritted the roads to ensure the shuttle doesn't slide off course and career into the banks of snow. We gotta be uh, level and parallel, or we stand the risk of jumping off the track, which I probably don't need to explain would be bad. That's, that's something I don't wanna see. Got all them bolts out? Yeah. Are we looking for level? Come up about an inch. Sheila and Jessica Rosales arrive to receive the home delivery. It is moving, yeah, you can see it moving. Oh my gosh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Two men to move one big house, that's awesome. So what'd you do today? I pulled a 60 ton house into place. <laughs> oh, it does look fantastic. <laughs> it is so weird to think that you can have your house made and brought out and protected from all of this. Special delivery. 
It's getting home. That should be good. How are you, Scott? Yep. Crane both these on the back of the deck, and then we'll chain her down. Let's go home. There's this house in the sunset now. And yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't there two hours ago. It's amazing. It's just amazing. David's team now build, move, and bolt entire streets together in just a matter of months. We developed this technology, but didn't know exactly what was gonna happen till we were physically moving houses. And uh, now as a company, with patents in place and communities being constructed, we're very excited about our future. House moving for us will become a daily activity. House moving is going to be uh, taking on new dimensions. Newbridge, Colorado, the fastest town in the West. On Vancouver Island, the homes are on their final leg of the journey. Victoria Marina is just a short tow away, and Marina manager Roger is preparing for the latest shipment. If you bring in the wrong house at the wrong time, then it's in your way. You can't work. And then if they start banging into each other, then we're in trouble. One false move, and you could take out a whole wall on one of these houses. It's been a long journey, and isn't it wonderful that it's time to find me here? <laughs> Roger guides in Deanna's house slowly. The route in is now surrounded by other float homes. There's no margin for error. Hey, watch your back end now. You've got to be awfully close to that house there. Because <laughs> I don't think I'll watch for a little while. Well, look how close it's getting to that house as well. Yikes. Get it out of there. Yes, please. I hope we're not hitting the corner. Oh, you're nervous, right? That is too close for comfort, fellas. Too close for comfort. Whoops. Oh, Canada. Just the corner there, and we hit the flag. After a run-in with the neighbor's flag post, Roger regains control of the house and slides it into position. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Job. Oh, that was a little too close for comfort for my taste. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure you knew what was happening, but when it swung I think over... it's still running. I think it didn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, watch the house there, buddy. Watch the house. <laughs> they secure the home in its mooring with steel posts driven deep into the seabed. Hey. Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? Look at this. Great. Great. Deanna steps Great. aboard and waits for Ken to return from work. Hello? Hello? Yeah? Yes. Hi, <laughs> honey, I'm home. <laughs> Must give me a kiss. We did it. We made it. We got one. Congratulations. Oh! What? Oh. 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 never pop. <laughs> And the plan is for more, and we have actually a waiting list of people wanting to come on board. So, I mean, it, I think we're going to have a very, a very vibrant, very great community here in a very short while. It's a great sense of uh, pride to see it finally coming together. It's uh, very much a relief to see the float homes get there without uh, any significant damage. All of the uh, float home purchasers uh, are also very content with their homes, so that's also another relief. Over the coming months, a flotilla of aquatic homes arrives in Victoria Harbour, and West Bay Marine Village is finally born.